In 1992, a small company named Playmates Toys released their first set of Star Trek action figures. For the first time ever, fans were offered superior articulation and screen accurate detail which soon made it one of the best-selling toy lines of all time. Created using the sculpting talent of both Scott Hensey and Steve Varner, Playmates provided fans with fun, colourful renditions of their favourite characters from every corner of the Star Trek universe. With electronic ships and props, this rapidly expanding line of action figures became one of the icons of the 1990s, inspiring collectors of all ages for decades to come. In 1995, based upon sales and market research, Playmates understood that their best-selling figures were those of the Next Generation crew, particularly Captain Picard. However, despite the TV series having successfully concluded the year prior, the company released a fourth wave of figures based on the hit show. Populating this series were popular recurring characters like Ambassador Sarek, Loaxana Troy and Ensign Ro Laren, as well as Season 1 regular Tasha Yar. In addition, holodeck versions of Data and Beverly Crusher appeared, while a future version of Picard would begin a subset of figures from the series finale, All Good Things. Also, by way of apology for the inaccurate uniforms used for the Generation's line, Wave 4 also contains special versions of Data and Geordie dressed in screen-accurate movie uniforms. While cyberneticist Dr. Noonien Sung and a fearsome Nausicaan both sculpted by Scott Hensey, set new benchmarks for intricate detail. Using existing moulds, Playmates also included chrome versions of Locutus and Worf in his Klingon attire. Despite being an artefact of 90s toy gimmicks, these figures make a striking addition to the line. Stranger still was the second wave of Deep Space Nine figures. With the show well into its third season, Playmates had a growing cast of humans, Bajorans and aliens to choose from. Packaged with the now customary space cap, this wave of figures relied heavily on alternate versions of the DS9 crew. Unfortunately, some collectors have been critical of this wave for its lack of screen accuracy and relevance to the show. As an example, the Thomas Riker figure bore no resemblance to the character's appearance in the episode Defiant. Even more unusual was a supposedly evil version of Captain Picard, alluding to a storyline never seen on screen or anywhere else. Highlights of this wave included Quark's brother, Rom, who was packaged with a miniature figure of his son, Nog. Not knowing how significant that character would become in the later years of the show, updated versions of Nog would be left for customizers to create. As for the other aliens, a favourite of sculptor Scott Hensey was Tosk. A benevolent alien from season one, Tosk's reptilian skin and suit are rendered in superb detail. Initially shown at Toy Fair in 1995, the classic movie series offered figures from the first six original cast feature films. Often neglected by licensors, this series was the first time many movie characters had been rendered as action figures. Slightly older representations of the original crew were all represented with the exception of Chekhov in the pastel uniform scene in the motion picture. For this wave, space caps were replaced by widescreen trading cards and figures came packaged with larger display bases. Alongside our heroes, the film series villains are also well represented by Commander Krug, General Chang and Martia the Shapeshifter. But it was plastic depictions of seminal villain Khan Noonien Singh and the Vulcan Lieutenant Savik that caught most collectors' attention. Both feature near-perfect likenesses and are regarded as some of the best figures of the entire Playmates line. Recognising the ever-increasing demand for new figures, Playmates were ready for the launch of Star Trek Voyager in 1995. Running concurrently with Deep Space Nine, 
The fourth live-action Star Trek series featured the first female captain as the series lead. Arriving in stores in time for the show's first season, the initial wave of Voyager figures represented a dynamic stylistic shift. Made of softer plastic, the Voyager figures used modular bodies, which meant that some characters shared exact proportions. A new thigh cut added yet more articulation to the figures, and for the first time gave them the ability to sit properly. Packaged with new trading cards, the entire first season crew of the USS Voyager is represented in their Starfleet uniforms, while civilians Neelix and Kez are just as accurate, appearing in their outfits as seen in the pilot episode, Caretaker. The first set of Voyager figures featured more restrained, neutral stances, as well as intricate, screen-accurate facial sculpts. A short second series of Voyager figures soon followed. It included detailed depictions of the new Delta Quadrant aliens, recurring characters Lieutenant Carey and Seska, as well as new versions of Chakotay and Belana Torres. When compared to their earlier products, it was clear Playmates was well and truly transitioning to the collector's market. The end of 1995 saw Playmates gather their entire Trek action figure line under one banner. Using a single card with striking new artwork, this next set of figures would encompass characters from every corner of the Star Trek franchise and would be a design aesthetic that would last the next two and a half years. This period saw the divisive Dr. Pulaski make her debut in plastic, along with recurring next generation alien, the Traveller. Whilst from Deep Space Nine, Grand Nagus Sek and the Hunter of Tosk accompanied new versions of Odo and Jadzia Dax. Also a favourite among collectors was Sheriff Worf, who, like Ron before him, came packaged with a minifigure of his son, Alexander. Continuing the series finale subsets, future versions of Geordi and Worf appeared alongside another subset, the Interstellar Action Series. Consisting of only two characters, this set included spring-loaded weapons for real firing action. With the 30th anniversary of Star Trek in September of 1996, Playmates began the year with new figures from the most recent seasons of Deep Space Nine. Newly promoted and wearing Command Red, a new rendition of Worf appeared along with a Jem Hadar soldier. Also included was the much-requested fan favourite, Plain Simple Garrick. Naturally, much of the focus was on the original series, with a special emphasis on the very first Star Trek episode, The Cage. A subset of four figures featuring Captain Pike, Mr. Spock, Vina, and a Talosian came packaged with all new trading cards. Additionally, an exclusive version of Captain Kirk was released appearing as he did in the show's second pilot. This unique figure was packaged with the Galileo shuttlecraft. The anniversary year concluded with the release of the eighth Star Trek feature film, First Contact, with Playmates releasing their merchandise months in advance. Distributed to potential licenses, 500 special Borg figures were produced. Nicknamed the Trifold Borg after its unique folding card back, this figure remains the holy grail for many collectors to this day. Including ships and roleplay items, the first contact line was extensive, and although the film itself was both a critical and commercial success, the toy line was not as well received by collectors. Opting to offer characters in the larger 6-inch scale meant these new figures were incompatible with previously released figures. The original lineup of 10 figures included a unique skinless data that was withdrawn in favour of Lily Sloan. Reasons for the cancellation of this figure include his obvious inaccuracy to anything seen in the film and him being much too scary for children. Yet, despite their tepid reception, 
One of these figures has the distinction of being the only Playmates figure to appear on screen. As visual effects producer Dan Curry used multiple Borg drone action figures to create a pile of mangled Borg corpses in the Voyager Season 3 finale, Scorpion. Amidst a creative detour, Playmates offered collectors one of their most unusual figure assortments. Featuring younger versions of the Next Generation characters, the Starfleet Academy line was met with mixed reactions. Packaged with a bonus CD-ROM, these figures are wonderfully sculpted interpretations of Picard, Riker, Geordie and Worf as young men. Having no connection to anything appearing in the films or TV shows, these figures are an oddity in a line known for its meticulous attention to detail. The 30th anniversary celebrations came to a head on September the 7th and 8th, 1996, with an officially endorsed convention in Huntsville, Alabama. Playmates Toys played a central role that weekend, auctioning off low-numbered figures, prototypes and specially produced items to eager fans. Also marking the occasion were two specially commissioned figures, versions of Scotty and Sulu as they appeared in the episode Where No Man Has Gone Before, limited to 10,000 each. However, no account of Playmates toys would be complete without addressing their most controversial figures. In an attempt to generate excitement for the toy line, three episode-specific characters were released in the smallest quantity yet, 1,701. Commemorating the registry of the USS Enterprise, the 1701 figures consisted of Captain Picard from the episode Tapestry, Tasha Yar from Yesterday's Enterprise, and Lieutenant Barclay from the Voyager episode Projections. Released in such tiny quantities, excitement soon turned to resentment, as highlighted by the magazine press who blasted the stunt whilst collectors searched frantically for these figures. Rumours persisted of warehouse workers extracting them so they never reached store shelves. In an era before eBay and online shopping, many collectors fell victim to scalpers who sold them for hundreds of times their value. Eventually bowing to a general wave of fan anger, Playmates increased production of the Barclay figure from 1,701 to 3,000. But alas, the damage had been done. With the chase for these three rare figures being too difficult, many fans simply gave up and deserted the Star Trek line altogether. After facing a hostile fan base, who were bypassing their products at maximum warp, Playmates realised they would need to re-evaluate their entire approach. 1997 arrives, and with it comes the introduction of the Warp Factor series, which would be a stunning reinvention but would it be enough to keep fans from abandoning ship? <laughs>